Thank you, Dr. Bui, for the introduction. So, welcome to my presentation. It's a pleasure for me to be here. And so in this session, I will talk about a questionnaire that uses pictures instead of words to assess usability. The agenda is quite straightforward, consisting of introduction, scale development, validation study, and discussion. There are many questionnaires around to assess usability. They differ in their characteristics, for example, the number of items they have, the number of dimensions they assess, or the device or the service they are used for, just to name a few. But they all have in common that they are verbal. That means they use words in a specific language to assess the construct of usability somehow. These questionnaires are mainly used in usability test settings or as part of a survey. But their use can lead us to some potential problems. First, they can be tedious, especially after a long experiment or a usability test when items are complicated or not 100% clear. They require also a certain amount of attention and motivation of the participant to get reliable results. And they require adequate language skills. For example, in Switzerland, where I come from, we have four official languages. So if we test participants in all languages, yeah, we need validated instruments that are, that are often not available. And to be honest, uh, such questionnaires are normally not a pleasure to fill in. So there's a lack of experience in filling in questionnaires. One possible way we can imagine to overcome some of these potential problems is to provide pictorial questionnaires to elim eliminate the need of words. Few instruments were developed in, in the field of HCI. Most of them were designed to yeah, for the assessment of emotions like the, the self-assessment mannequin or the lamp tool, the primo, some of them are also variations of existing instruments that use, for example, small animations like the beating hearts there. Some of them use also sound. I think the Primo also uses sound, short extracts of, yeah, a bit of sound. Very few has been done with regard to pictorial measurement of perceived usability. We recently developed and tested a pictorial single item scale to assess the usability of a coffee machine, automated coffee machine. And we are also on it to make the same for, for example, smartphones and other devices that are interesting. So why, why doing this? So there are a couple of advantages, some benefits we think. There is a, no need of uh, translating words into thoughts since the essence is already visible and more directly processed. They may also be culture free. That means they can be applied in different cultures at least to a certain degree. Due to their visual nature and also due to how items are represented, pictorial questionnaires tend also to be more fun while filling in. And that is probably something that is not often said of verbal questionnaires. Since no text or very few text is used, there's no need to translate such, such instruments into a target language, which eliminates the need of further validation studies once validated. And some authors also argue that pictorial scales have a higher level of validity since no words um, have to be interpreted or just few words that are maybe comprehensible. 
And the last advantage I want to mention is that some authors argue that since processing time is faster, answers are also done faster. So the project's aim was to develop an inclusive, a motivating and a pleasant alternative for the assessment of usability. And also to get some initial data with regard to psychometric properties of such an instrument. So let's come to scale development. We basically took the items of the system usability scale as a basis for pictorial item development. The system usability scale, the SUS, is a well-established and uh, very often used questionnaire with 10 items. For example, I think I would like to use the system frequently or I found the system unnecessarily complex. So participants rate all the items and um, the agreement and a score results, a global usability score. We applied several methods in the development of our pictorial items. In the beginning, we conducted an association elicitation with nine persons to understand what images come in mind when people read out the verbal SUS items. Just a moment. Okay, it's not working, but um, it's over the over left corner up, the association and it's elicitation. Um, we also included, no, sorry, I missed a point. Their associations were then the basis for the first sketches we, which we elaborated in design meetings before they were tested in think aloud sessions. And we also included the feedback of uh, 10 usability experts to improve our ideas, and this was an iterative, iterative process with a couple of loops. So the final scale was then tested in a validation study. I just want you to show the final version, just to have a glimpse on it. Um, it's also in, in the article. For example, here, I think I would like to use the system frequently. We have the extreme points on the left and on the right, and in the middle is a four, five point rating scale, which participants make the rating. Found the system unnecessarily complex. Thought the system was easy to use. I think I would need the support of a technical person to be able to use the system. Found the various functions in the system very well integrated. I thought there was too much inconsistency in the system. And I would imagine that most people would learn to use the system very quickly found the system very cumbersome to use, felt very confident using the system, and last but not least, I needed to learn a lot of things before I could get going with the system. Validation study. Sorry, I skipped a bit too fast that you can see the nice picture we made. Research questions, we had a couple of them. Um, we were interested if um, we achieve, well, if we get uh, similar psychometric properties as with the SUS. And for this, con for this uh, presentation, I just want to focus on convergent validity. Uh, is, the, is our pictorial version also more fun? And is it filled in faster than the verbal one? Made a study with uh, 60 participants, uh, mainly students between 20 and 31 years old. We had a smartphone prototype, um, which we tested in the lab or also at home, because we had portable usability test lab. <coughs> and we manipulated system usability, so low versus high usability. And we measured uh, clearly usability with the two instruments. Question and completion time was assessed, and also motivation and fun. To the procedure, um, participants interacted first with the smartphone prototype, either with the low or the high usability version, 
afterwards they feed in questionnaires, so the verbal and the pictorial ones, but this was uh, counterbalanced. It looked like this. So they had a prototype with an interface, and below they had three tasks to solve. Afterwards, they had the pictorial questionnaire and the verbal ones. Coming to results, um, just to ask, do we have time? I'm not aware how much time um, I have. You have five minutes now. Five? Yeah. Great. <laughs> cool. so, sorry. Yeah. So, as you can see here, most of the items have uh, similar means. So these are the items. We used here a one to seven rating scale. And most interestingly, well, there are also a couple that don't have similar means. I come to this point later. But most interestingly, the global score of both instruments are quite similar. So 74 and 75, which is very interesting for us. But I just wanted to show you here correlations because I focus on convergent validity here. As you may see, um, about seven, yeah, seven out of ten items have correlations above 0.5, some of them higher, and also the global score yeah, has a, a strong high correlation 0.8. But nevertheless, some of the items are below 0.5, which means maybe that there are some issues. A look at motivation. Uh, in general, with this instrument, the IMI, there are three items um, with fun, joy, and interest. Um, basically, all participants, not all participants, sorry, restart. Participants rated pictorial version as more fun, more joy, and more interesting. And this is also reflected in the global score, the aggregated score of the fun, joy, and interest item, with a significant difference. Coming to question on completion time, um, the verbal one is filled in faster. The pictorial one, yeah, as you can see, the verbal one is between 60 and 90 in the mean, and the pictorial one way above between 90 and uh, between 100 and 120 seconds. So participants needed more time to fill in the pictorial scale. So findings, two thirds of the items have substantial correlations with the corresponding SUS item. A very high correlation between the SUS score and the PSUS score, 0.8. And PSUS is perceived more fun, more interesting, but the SUS is filled in more quickly with a couple of limitations. The sample, sample size, just 60 participants. Also, the sample was too homogeneous um, in, with regard to educational background and cultural background. Not all items are exclusively nonverbal. We had uh, some um, keywords or onomatopoeia included in the pictures, in the pictorial scales? Yes. Future studies. Two minutes. Two minutes, yes. I'm coming to the end. Um, for future studies, we would uh, consider the refinement of these f three scales that have correlations below 0.5 or even dropping them. Maybe this also could be a solution. Validation studies with bigger samples and more heterogeneous samples. We also consider animations for future scales that could be interesting to get more meaningful scales. And there's the need to develop guidelines, so a standardized approach for de developing such scales because this simply not exists. So, conclusion. We think we had satisfactory psychometric properties of our instrument, at least for this pilot study. It's a pilot study. I have to mention this again. Uh, we found an increased questionnaire experience, or we argue like this, but with the drawback of a longer completion time. 
So I want to mention also my co-authors, which are not here today. So Naomi Frey, Masha Klanke, Jürgen Sauer, and Andrea Sondrecker. So also the design support of Veronica Salombrino, Mayra Overney, and Francesca Asenbauer. And I'd like to thank the institutions which made this possible and believed in this project, as I do. The University of Freiburg, Puzzle ITC, and we are Cube. Thank you for your attention. And I have here your honorable mention award certificates, um, one for you and one each for your co-authors. So congratulations. I have so many questions. We will talk. I want to ask one of them before we get started. The SUS yes. is, a, is a liquor scale, and you, have, by putting pictures on both ends, you have essentially transformed it into a semantic differential scale. And yes. I'm wondering what thoughts you may have about how that might have influenced the results. I think people are used to both. I'm, if you have to test it, in fact, I can't say it 100% if it has influenced the, the results, but in my opinion, rather not. Okay. I, I know this is maybe not a valid, valid answer, but uh, yeah. We I think it's something that needs to be investigated, let's put it that way. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Other questions? The, the student volunteer will bring you the mic. Okay. Hi, Andreas Rina, Technische Hochschule Ingolstadt. Really cool. I, I really like this. Um, Thank you. Nevertheless, I assume that pictures might can be misinterpreted, at least if you don't have any domain knowledge, right? Yes. So you, you showed this example of the coffee machine in the very first place, and then it developed pictures um, showing some smartphone app or interaction on a, on a tablet, whatever. So I assume that that you might have a different set of pictures for different domains. And then the question is how to make sure that the results are um, comparable, because this is what, what SOS basically is. You can compare system usability across domains. Yes. So we focus clearly on the device here. So it's a, it's a smartphone device that is uh, depicted. And it was also the main idea to uh, to give this questionnaire after a usability test. So people are already in a setting in there. And also the SUS um, items are quite general, I think, and we tried to make our also general. But I see the point. It's not specified for all contexts. This is also something that uh, should be maybe reflected from context to context. Maybe this instrument is not adapted for all contexts. So do you consider having different sets of, uh, um, of pictograms for different domains? What do you mean by different sets? So, so you mean different content? Not, not showing a, a tablet app, but showing a coffee machine uh, instead of on the pictogram. Uh, device specific? Yes, I think this could be, or this is also our idea that, these, uh, this, that the device is replaceable. But you have to do this, you have to draw this, for sure. We have time for one more question. Um, I don't know who was first, so. Yeah, hello, Peter from Axon. Um, I'm quite interested in, uh, were you able to make any um, comparisons uh, regarding the uh, uh, per um, perceived precision? Um, perceived what, sorry? Precision of the answers. Because I have in my, uh, the back of my mind, there was a study uh, regarding medical professionals and their understanding of the English language, that they were not able to understand um, the content of questions or uh, sentences, actually, in the correct way. Um, so this uh, difference in the ability uh, in the language led to quite a lot of confusion and even medical error. And I see here a lot of potential in minimizing these errors. Yes. Um, are you planning to do any comparison between the real verbal precision, the result, uh, regarding how correct is it, to, the, uh, to your method? We have not yet planned something like this, but this uh, seems interesting, for sure. Um, at least we focused in the development process 
to make a lot of think aloud protocols to yeah to assure more or less that they're perceived the same way but I think it's a bit the same with uh, verbal items. We use the SUS in German, and there are, for example, inconsistencies in German, inconsistency. Also, this item is, is very ambiguous, perceived, ambiguously perceived. But it's interesting. Yeah, in, in that question mentioned. I have in the back of my mind, there were even a negation, that the really the, the uh, contrary was interpreted. Yes. And I think your system can be way better than that. <laughs> Yes, if uh, the visualizations are nicely made. Yeah. Not nicely made, but uh, usefully. Yeah. Uh, on that made. point, I'd like to point everybody to the Sorrow and Lewis paper from CHI 2011, where they showed that it, one could reword the sus in all positive and, it, and you'd get the same results. So, theoretically, that's not a problem. But thanks. Okay, thank you very much.